Thank you for joining us. This is another edition of Women on a Hustle, and I'm Cheesecake Kell. Tonight, we are interviewing five dynamic women with Sister Power Magazine, Lorraine Phillips, who's the publisher, and her, her team. So please enjoy this. Afterwards, we have an interview from our sister station, Neil Soul. They're interviewing the producers and directors of I'm Through With White Girls that actually won the American Black Film Festival in LA. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hi, I'm Kelly and you are watching Women on the Hustle. Thank you for joining us once again. Tonight we have the editor and publisher of Sister Power Magazine and her team. Lorraine Phillips, how are you? Hey, I'm fine. How you doing, Kelly? I'm doing well. Great. So tell us something about yourself. Tell us how you got started. What's this idea of Sister Power Magazine all, all about? Well, Sister Power actually started about eight years ago. Um, at that time, a, f a group of friends were sending around emails to each other, inspirational emails. And I just find it, found it so coincidental that the email always applied to what was going on in my life. You know, it would speak to whatever was going on in my life. So I wanted a way to expound on that and just share um, those emails with more than the 15 people that was on that list. So I came up with the idea for a website. And that's basically how the magazine came around. Um, we've all been working together for like eight years now. Actually, Stephanie's new to the team, so she's been with us two years. But the rest of us have been working together for about nine, eight, nine years. And um, somewhere along the line, it came a lot. We, you know, I came up with the idea, or we came up with the idea for the magazine to take the uh, website to the next level. Your co-founder, someone that's really close to you, tell us about her. Well, um, I think even in my letter to the from the editor, I say she is the light that has led us to where we are right now, because she suffered an illness that. Um, she just she was so dignified even at the end and you know she let me know that it's not over until it's over because throughout her her whole illness I saw her fight the entire time I never saw her you know blame God or say why me or I just saw her continue to fight and continue to be a blessing in others life in others life so Sometimes when I'm, you know, enduring personal hardship, whether it's my own personal life or the magazine, I think about her and how she endured things and how would I cope if I was her? Because sometimes I'm a bit of a baby, <laughs> big baby. So I think about how strong she would be and she would just take everything in her stride and keep it moving. So I think all of us learnt from the way we saw her handle her disease and I think that's a big part of the reason why we're sitting here today and we have our magazine in front of us because of the lesson that she taught us. Okay, and who is this she? What's oh, sorry, it's Jackie Cornelius. Jackie she Cornelius. She was the original founding member along with myself. Okay. And um, that picture of her that I saw, and I also noticed it in the magazine because for a minute I thought it was you. <laughs> and uh, she she was incredibly beautiful. And amazing. I could kind of feel her spirit yeah. in, in that photograph. Everybody says the same thing about that. So tell me about this magazine. When will it hit the newsstands? And well, actually, hit the newsstands today. Ah. Uh, but it's limited edition, so... You know, it's basically where you can find it. In Atlanta, we are at the all the major black bookstores, The Shrine, Madhu, and obviously we're available online. But I think as we grow, um, our distribution will grow. Absolutely, because you know what? Essence only sold one copy at first. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, exactly. so it's, 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 you know, everybody's got to start somewhere, yeah. you know. It's school back growth. So tell me a little bit about your background. Uh, I hear a little accent. It doesn't sound like it's from Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> where are you from? I'm originally from the U.K., Okay, um, and that's London, y'all, if y'all ain't know. Yeah, London. Okay. There's black folks over there, because surprisingly <laughs> enough, you know, I, I still get the question, 
we got black folks, black folks in the UK, and I'm like, you know, don't be fooled. We are everywhere. But you know what? It's the thing about the UK. When you say UK, folks will be like, UK. Let's say England, London. She's British. Okay. <laughs> you know, I told a guy who was from the new UK. He was like, speak some French. <laughs> Growing up in the UK, uh, you can pretty much say I wasn't doing the things I was supposed to be doing as a teenager. And or you could say that you were, because you know, we well, we yeah. are all our journeys are all predestined, yeah. and we are doing what we're supposed to do. It may not be what other folks think we're supposed to do, right. but it all leads us to where we are. You're right. So, well, I was doing what. I was <laughs> <laughs> And, you was uh, doing wrong. You was sinning. <laughs> <laughs> she was doing some sinning, y'all. Basically, you got to be a bad girl to get to the good parts. I'm telling you, I mean, I never change a thing. But um, basically, one day there was a family meeting. I was about 18. <laughs> there had never, ever been a family meeting in all my 18 years. Okay. And there was a family meeting, and the next thing I knew, I was on a plane to America. So they were talking about uh, the port in your ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> And, and you know they sent me to Mississippi, which was the perfect spot because coming from London, I, I didn't need to go to another fast pace. You know Mississippi made me slow down and get into my studies and things like that. So it was perfect. So did you really think when you coming from London to Mississippi, did you think that America was like Mississippi? Were you like, damn? <laughs> I was pretty sure because I, I had been to the Caribbean mm -hmm. and you know we have you know little shotgun houses and stuff like that right. so when I got to America and saw that you know it was pretty close to what I'd seen in the Caribbean I was pretty I, shocked. I, I can imagine they sent you to the poorest with the joke, state. But the joke is when I got here my aunt I think she got it mixed up with Missouri or something <laughs> she told me it was the was coldest it? state in America. Oh. So when I arrived, I was in sweaters, boots, <laughs> feet, wool coat. I was about to pass out in line trying to register. <laughs> so I, I, I soon found out it was the hottest, one of the hottest <laughs> states, not the coldest. So. Absolutely. Okay, so tell us about this person sitting next to you. Who is she and what is she to you? Well, she actually is my right hand woman, is Candice. Bovian. She recently got married, so I have to get used to the new. And um, Candice is our production director. She can tell you more about herself. Okay, Candice. So we heard that you recently got married. So how's that going? Uh, marriage is wonderful. Is it? Yes. Good. So did you have sex bringing the new year in? <laughs> I plead the fifth. Okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. She. I'm trying to get to the juicy parts, the story behind the story of Sister Power. See, these women are trying to be prim and proper, but before the cameras was rolling, they was talking some things. Okay, Miss Candace, tell us what do you do for Sister Power magazine? As Lorraine said, I'm the production coordinator, but because it's a small staff of us, we all kind of do some of everything. Okay. So I write articles, solicit writers, um, help with the production, help with the design layout. We all agree on the design layout. Um, yeah, oh, oh yeah, I do a lot of PR. I try to get our the name out there, try to get publicity for Sister Power. Okay. All right. So you are truly a woman on the hustle. I am a Absol woman on the hustle. Absolutely. You wear many hats, which is what we all do. While holding down a full-time job. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Next year this time, we're going to come back on uh, January 1st, 2009, and we're going to see where we are mm -hmm. then, okay? So this is going to be like a time castle thing. Gonna fly out to Jamaica cause I'm going to fly out. <laughs> hey, but you know what? You're going you're gonna to be so large. You're going to be able to fly us out there. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. That's how. That's so, it. yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, who is this woman? I am Aladra Gonzalez. Excuse me, because I am suffering from a little bit of laryngitis right now. Okay. But uh, I met all of these women, with the exception of Stephanie, at uh, WebMD eight years ago. That's how we all met. I am uh, the executive editor of the magazine, but I also, like Candace say, wear many hats. I've been doing some distribution work, uh, trying to figure out our cost and the packaging and everything of that nature. 
and uh, or write articles for the magazine as as well as just submit story ideas. We just kind of sit back and, and, and do what we can to help each other out. Okay, and tell us something. I know you wear many hats too, and not just on um, for Sister Power in life in general, as we all do. And I apologize for it. you just have one child, so that ain't nothing because <laughs> I got one, okay, and yours grown because mine grown so. But I understand that you have a multitude of children. I and do. then you had a couple at one time. So tell us about that. That doesn't sound the way she just put it, you guys. <laughs> I do have a... She got about ten. <laughs> I have three kids. One uh, eight-year-old stepson who has been living with us full-time since he was three. Okay. And then I have two-year-old twins, boy and a girl. Oh, okay. I've been married for six years. So, and my New Year's uh, was pretty much with a house full of guests. So, okay, no sex. So no, sex? no. <laughs> all, all right. Okay, no sex. You're waiting for the good stuff, so mm -hmm. I'll hand it to this person. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh, we can't print what happened last night. <laughs> okay, we weren't in Vegas, so it ain't got to say that. <laughs> all right, and who are you? I'm Karen Cotter. Hi, Karen Cotter. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, Did you have sex last night? <laughs> Did any anybody in this place have sex last night? Raise your hand. And we ain't cutting this. All right. We no, we no. 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 We want the truth. And this is going because this 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 one, this is a juicy interview. I like this one. Come on. I get home. You gonna have some more sex? <laughs> Tell us, girl. <laughs> I know. No. Were you on top? Plead the fifth. Okay. <laughs> All right. Tell us about you. What do you do? Um, I'm right now. Well, like they said before, we kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, going forward, I'll be strictly handling handling circulation. So I don't know if I'm ready for that or not, because we're gonna blow up. Absolutely. Um. But, you know, from the beginning, we, you know, read articles and decided which ones to go in and just go into photo shoots. And so it's just kind of like wherever you're needed, just jump in. Okay. And I hear you got a bunch of children, too. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, my 15-year-old stepdaughter. She moved um, here with us from Nashville two years ago. Okay. And I have a three-year-old and I have an eight-year-old. Okay. So tell me. Um, because that I, I had stepdaughters at one time mm -hmm. and um, you know they were they were adorable their mother dropped them off uh, at my husband's <laughs> at my husband's job uh, a month after we got married and didn't pick them up again for a year wow. so I know the challenge the challenges is not with the children though we all know that it's not the children's right. fault but uh, it's hard being a stepmother yes very you hard. know um, you deal with, and I, I certainly hope that none of us will ever give the baby mama drama that we get. I hope we nice gotta, story. we gotta, we gotta take. But no, no, ladies, ladies, for real, I don't care what. If your man decide to leave you tomorrow and he gets somebody else, it ain't her fault. Yep. Don't let him go. Don't call him two in the morning because the baby need formula and the baby ten. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Get your child support. If the man want to see the child, let him see him. Nose strings. Yeah. Okay. So we got to take a vow because do you know how many women wreck have it on our lives with that baby mama drama? Yes. And it's hard when you're trying to raise somebody else's child yeah. and love them like your own. Mm -hmm. It is hard yeah. when you're dealing with the baby mama drama. Just say thank you. You baby mamas, <laughs> just say thank you and leave us alone. Because I'm newly divorced and I'm kind of wondering, you know, because you're always a mom, you know, when you have your own children. But when they're not yours and you're no longer a wife, are you still, you know, that's, that's kind of, you know, I still want to do things for them and see them and stuff. But they got a new... Uh, 
uh, surrogate mother in place. So it's kind of it's kind of difficult, yeah. you know, uh, with with that regard. And they don't call me just like their daddy don't. So <laughs> I'm like they he was through with me. They threw with me too. We have a good relationship. That's um, good. I met my husband. She was two. Oh, okay. So we had a we have a very good relationship, but okay. it's still different when you're coming from. You have one set of rules, mm-hmm. you know, with your mom and. And how yeah. we do things, you know, here is, you know, totally different. Not to mention you have younger siblings, mm-hmm. you know, that they don't understand. They just love you. They want your attention. Mm-hmm. You're so just, just getting used sister. to having that constant, you mm-hmm. know, you know, hey, hey. You yeah. know, it was just an adjustment for, for everybody. Not to mention, you know, now there's the whole boy thing. and School. And- yeah, so it's an adjustment, but. It's gotten a lot better. Oh, lot that's better. good. When you go home, give her a hug for me, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Now we got last but not least, Miss Stephanie. Tell us what you do, Stephanie, and how you do it. And did you have sex last night, girl? Well, I was going to try to answer before you asked, but unfortunately, <laughs> did not have sex last night. You gonna have um, some tonight? I'm a, yeah. I'm gonna figure something out. <laughs> That's my girl. Do, 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 it, do it for the take one for the team. Take one for the team. <laughs> um, again, I'm the newest member of the team. I've been officially with the team for about two years, I would say. Um, I met Lorraine. I'm her hairstylist. I've known her about seven or eight years. I've been doing her about for about seven or eight years, and that's how we met. I, um, she kind of, you know, she would talk about the magazine over the years. I knew about the website, and I'm self-employed, and I always try to do different things, whether it's sell products or purses or bags or whatever, just to keep from having to go get a job job. Right. So um, I think some of the part she asked me to be a part of the team because maybe she saw some of the initiative thing that I would take to do to eat, to put food on the table, other than, you know, going to get, you know, to corporate America or find an outside job. So... Um, that's how our relationship came about and how we met. I have a 10 year old daughter. We haven't made it to the teen stages yet. And she's adorable. She's really is. I she, was blessed. She really is yeah, a sweetheart. Yeah, she really is. Um, I've been divorced 10 years. Okay. Some of you, even on the team, might have not known that, but I've been divorced 10 years. Okay. And. Married to Love and Gay. It looks just like Love but um, that's my story, and I really, I always wanted to say this to the team to thank you all for allowing me to be a part of such a dynamic group of women. You know, for them to even, I always tell the range, just for them to be a team and to be able to hold things together, you know, for eight years, that's alone just says a lot in itself. You know, no cat fights have broken out, nobody pulled nobody hair out, nobody lost no weave, no locks have been pulled out. So that alone and you know what and before the magazine is just amazing to be able to do that. I have to commend you all because I I'm really all about loving, supporting and encouraging one another. And that's what we as a women just don't do enough. And I I hate to say that it's it's race based because I think that things happen that are character, not color issues. But since what we know primarily is us, we really need to do more to celebrate each other and realize that what you have can only enhance what I have. You know, it doesn't take anything away. You know, um, because even in my wildest dreams, I'd never be Oprah or Beyonce. You know, but that doesn't mean that who I am is any way below them. And all of us, we got to hold ourselves in higher esteem. And we got to demand that the men and children in our lives hold us in that regard, too. So I have one more question for all y'all since you guys are the team. How, sister, get on the cover? (laughs) Just your daughter okay. ain't enough. Cause, cause, yeah, that's my child right there. <laughs> okay, she bald headed. We she gotta bad. have the whole family. What's got, up? You, you need to have her mama. <laughs> How does a sister get on the cover? Y'all gotta stop with these models. Have a real woman. No, actually, it's funny you should say that because when I was actually looking for a cover model, I went to all the modeling agencies in Atlanta, and I wanted. 
a, not a different looking sister, but more of a regular looking sister. And everywhere I went, there was, you know, light skin, long hair, and strong and straight nose. And when I told them what I was looking for, you know, dark skin, real strong features, uh, you know, just mm -hmm. a sister, mm -hmm. they said, oh, you'll have to go up to New York for that. So literally, we don't go to modeling agencies anymore. We literally just pick women off the street because that's what we represent real women okay wow. we're all different wow. shapes colors wow. sizes wow. I, i'm a real woman <laughs> kelly i'm off the street and, and and a sister kelly. put it out here now what does a sister have we to got do you we got you to get on the cover because i'm trying to move up to we got you we got you know you. just look, just it, there can be more oprah like folks in the world <laughs> You know, we got you. But just play, <laughs> playing on what you just said as well about, you know, us celebrating each other. Actually, sister power is a celebration of women. Absolutely. And, you know, brothers always say to me, so when you going to do ones for brothers? I'm like, I don't know nothing about that. You going to have to do that. I'm trying to get the sisters right so we could be better mothers, better uh, uh, um, wives. wives. <laughs> but you know what else we got to be better to ourselves because you no know what one. so much we spend so much time giving everything we got to other folks thank you that we don't take enough back for ourselves we don't give enough to ourselves and that's why some of us accept things that are not worthy of us we accept men that disrespect us because we don't care enough about ourselves thank you that's you also know another thing about our magazine that we focus focus on is like our tagline is yeah. inner strength inner beauty and inner peace mm -hmm. so we wanted to differentiate ourselves from the mainstream magazines there aren't many to begin with for african-american women mm -hmm. but we wanted to differentiate ourselves by focusing on the inner woman and and lifting her up and making her a better person so that like you said we can be better to yeah. our wife or to our husbands and our children mm -hmm. um Y'all going to be watching us and saying, damn, where are they at? We're in Atlanta. But you can just get on the website, www.sisterpower.com, and hit one of these ladies up. Go to your salons. Go to your uh, grocery stores. Tell them that you want Sister Power Magazine there. Do what you do. Do it like you was doing it for a man. Right. All right. Do what you do. Do it for us. Thank you so much. All I really right. feel like I was among sisters, All right. and this was just truly, truly wonderful. Thank you. And you know what? With luck, by this time next year, I would have had sex too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi. We're Phyllis and Leah Johnson, and we are the producers of I'm Through with White Girls, The Inevitable Undoing of Jay Brooks. We decided we would interview each other for you today on Neo Soul. <laughs> and um, so the first question I have for you, Phyllis, is um, what was your inspiration for getting involved in the film? My inspiration for getting involved in the film was um, it's really important to me that we continue to create um, multicultural content that's exciting and um, has a social message but is also commercially accessible to everyone. So I felt this this script, I'm Through With White Girls, was one that um, definitely uh, entertained and also invited um, the viewer to use the script or the storyline as a primer for that, that discussion about race that is one that I think everyone wants to have in the U.S. especially and of course in many other countries where there are, are mixtures of cultures. And uh, so I saw it as a really effective springboard, commercial, commercially wrapped springboard for that conversation, and that was my inspiration. Excellent. Well, maybe actually I can jump in, and you can think of the right. next question and what say, was your inspiration? "Oh gosh, my inspiration." Um, actually, it's funny. It was a lot the same as yours. We're twins, in case you didn't know. Um, it was a lot the same of your, as yours, but um, one of the interesting things for me was that um, a friend of mine wrote uh, the script. And I had been looking um, for a script for myself as an actress. We're, we're both actresses as well as producers. And I'd been looking for one that I could do that would, you know, have me as one of the leads, but maybe not the lead, um, so that I could handle, like, producing and um, acting at the same time. And when we read I'm Through with White Girls that my friend Courtney Lilly um, wrote, 
I knew right away that it was a really good script and that it was something that could totally um, achieve what we had wanted to do as producers and at the same time give um, me an opportunity to do some acting. And I don't know if I'm ready for the end of my natural born bachelor life. You deserve better than this, I know. But more so, you deserve better than me. Jay? Jay? You didn't leave her a letter, did you? Well, I'm not doing anyone any favors by sticking in a relationship that I know isn't going to work. You've been playing around with too many of them white girls. That's why you can't settle down. Mm -hmm. Are you color struck? No. The first woman I ever kissed was a sister. Boy, your mama don't count. <laughs> <laughs> How is Operation Brown Sugar going? Dude! What? I had to tell somebody. I've got a job, an apartment, no kids, and I've never been to jail. I'll have them lined up like jet centerfolds. <laughs> Come on, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean any of that. Don't listen to me. <laughs> it's not about color or class. You're just afraid to commit. I'm pulling for you to find somebody that you love so much, you can't even help it. I was born in Canada. Canada? Does that make you African-Canadian? Actually, I'm African-Canadian, because my mother's white and my dad is black. Yeah, I didn't know black girls grew blue hair. Well, I didn't know you could smoke a cigarette through a straw. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, there's something so massively wrong with her. Jay, you say that about every girl you date. You are immature. You have issues with commitment. You have a silly job, silly friends. Go. You're cheap, and your comprehension of romance is a joke. I really don't see black chicks digging this guy. And no. you are. I don't. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the show, uh, the interview with Sister Power Magazine, and the clip of I'm Through With White Girls. I um, I know it was a little silly and I got a little risque there talking about the sex thing, but it was real, real. And if you could have only heard what they were talking about when we weren't taping. But uh, we had a lot of fun, and I'm about to go and have sex right now.